So let's think about how these different projects allow us now to study the microbiome, to understand, first of all, healthy microbiome and healthy variation, right? So we'll look at this left side of the screen, the Human Microbiome Project. You can see some examples here, American Gut Project, British Gut Project, um, uh, et cetera. Okay, let me take a look at uh, some of the questions. Okay, so um, are there any specific databases related to cancer, microbiome and cancer? So there are some studies that have shown uh, specific variation in the microbiome that can lead to more successful treatments, for example, with immunotherapy, um, right? We'll talk about this in a little bit, but um, essentially one thing that we need to understand is that we need to have a healthy baseline, right? When you think of any pathology, any condition, you're comparing it to someone. And we'll see, first of all, the variability mm. in the healthy microbiome. And after we take a look at the, at the healthy microbiome, we'll also discuss how this applies to medical applications mm -hmm. and to our understanding of... Share what I'm sharing, bro. Um, I got a question. Why does every time I... Uh, Ilya, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but we can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you. So, um, uh, so yeah, so what I was saying is that there is this uh, in utero colonization hypothesis. This hypothesis is um, that uh, there is a, uh, um, a microbiome that is passed to the baby in the uh, uterus. Um, and uh, so, uh, Sonica, I think there's somebody uh, here that is um, not supposed to be here. Um, okay, so um, this hypothesis uh, claims that um, there is a way uh, to um, uh, pass the microbiome to the baby from the mother in the womb. Uh, there isn't maybe enough um, uh, evidence that that is uh, conclusive um, and um, as a result, we won't focus on that hypothesis, but let's talk about some of the additional factors that do play a role in the development of the microbiome that have been studied extensively in infants, uh, infants that are between zero and three years. So, um, so Nalika, would you be able to just remove the people um, yes. that are... Yes, Ilya, I'm doing that. Thank All right. You. So some of those include gestational age. So how long uh, baby stays in the womb, uh, the birth mode, uh, for example, cesarean or natural, um, sanitation, um, uh, antibiotic exposure is a major one, um, as well as host genetics. So several different studies have focused on trying to understand these factors in detail. Um, and now we have some evidence of how the composition changes and how um, specific presence or absence of bacteria uh, could be linked to some of these factors. Now, what happens in the early ages is that because this is an anaerobic uh, condition, uh, specific types um, of uh, bacteria start developing. Um, and what you can do, as I mentioned, the link that I uh, just shared with you to the Silva uh, database will allow you to um, search for some of these bacteria. So for example, we can take a look at uh, Clostridia uh, and search for this name in that um, database. So let's take a look at that. So you would go right here and just type in Clostridia and press on search. Okay, so as you can see, um, Clostridia, again, you can go kind of from 
uh, the higher level of toxicotomy all the way down to the more detailed one. Uh, so this is a Firmicutes, right? Uh, Bacilli, um, Erisa, Erisipilla trichalis, uh, right? I'm not gonna try to pronounce this, but you can see the variation right here um, at this level of how many different ones you're going to be able to find. And so you can zoom in. Okay, you can zoom in and you can see um, that there's a lot of uh, variability. So again, um, there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of variability, and that is essentially what makes it so difficult to study this kind of variation at the lower levels, right? So the lower the level, the more detail we get, but at the same time, we're going to be getting, um, uh, uh, we're going to be getting, um, you know, a lot of information potentially from that. So here is an example of a study that uh, was done on the effect of uh, probiotics um, on the infant development, uh, specifically infants that are um, uh, preterm uh, infants, preterm birth. So here you can see composition of the gut microbiome at the early phase of development dominated by four phyla, actinobacteria, bacteroidetes, firmicutes, and proteobacteria, right? So we just saw that these are specific types of bacteria, right? And here we can see um, that it is dominated by these specific uh, uh, groups of bacteria. Um, the adult microbiome, so again, um, this develops over three uh, first years, typically. Uh, so there's less of a, um, a diversity at the very, very early uh, stage. And then that diversity grows and starts to become established during the adolescence. So from uh, that early uh, childhood all the way to the end of the adolescent period, the microbiome becomes established and the primary factors that affect the established microbiome are the use of antibiotics, so how frequently and how intensively those antibiotics have been used, as well as the level of exercise and, of course, diet. And so here you can see um, the adult microbiome, and this is well characterized in the Human Microbiome Project, is really uh, divided into these several different categories by the major factors that continue to affect the microbiome over the course of the adult stable condition. And those are specific enterotypes, two or three enterotypes that are well studied. Uh, body mass index, exercise frequency, different types of lifestyles, and then a major component are cultural and dietary habits. So here we can see uh, a major thing that you wanna think about as you kind of look at this healthy microbiome is uh, diversity and balance. Um, as well as this dysbiosis, so how it changes, how it becomes, um, you know, dominated by a particular type of bacteria that is maybe able to colonize and suppress other types of bacteria, reducing the diversity. And as a result, the function also changes. And so we'll see how that um, kind of looks like in the data itself. So um, first of all, let's briefly talk about these enterotypes. So different types of uh, publications have been um, focused on understanding these enterotypes, but basically um, we can look at two or three different enterotypes. Uh, so here's an example in specific types of bacteria, bacteriodes, uh, Prevotella and Ruminococcus, for example, you can see that they change in terms of their um, relative abundance. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, specifically those that are interested in the diet, um, you know, they've been able to categorize these three different enterotypes into those that consume carbohydrates uh, like uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, then what we call the Western diet, uh, so bacteriodes dominant types. Um, and those are the Western diet uh, because they're associated with kind of, uh, you know, the typical Western diet like meats. Uh, uh, potatoes and you know things like that, 
And then uh, there is an additional cluster that is not as uh, dominant, but it's primarily for those that are uh, coming from rural agricultural communities. They don't have a lot of variety in their uh, source of nutrition. Uh, and um, those are typically uh, farming communities. So those are the kind of major emerging trends, right, that have uh, come out of these studies. Um, they've shown that um, there's definitely an association of microbial diversity uh, because of the um, type of a um, civilization, so to say, or a community that the uh, samples come from. So especially talking about the human gut microbiome, uh, it could be categorized as very high in this uh, remote hunter-gatherer population, uh, kind of reduced, but uh, still pretty high microbial diversity in the traditional farming or fishing populations, and then uh, lower diversity uh, in this Western European and industrialized populations. And so here you can see also how um, some of these variations have been associated with geography. Uh, so one major reason is because the same trend of industrialization could be tracked across geography, uh, but also uh, not surprisingly, uh, some of those habits associated with the type of food could be found within a specific population that maintains a, a specific aspect of lifestyle and uh, food consumption. So a good uh, review right here, uh, geography, ethnicity, or substance specific variation in human microbiome composition and diversity. Uh, you can see, oh, sorry, let me go back uh, and share the link uh, from this publication. I found it um, interesting if anybody's uh, trying to understand more um, how this um, uh, healthy human microbiome uh, varies and, and what kinds of factors um, are there. Okay, now because of this variation, so again, think of the microbiome as a community. Once that community is stable, it assumes certain functions that are linked to immune uh, responses to different infections. Uh, they form a film. A lot of times that film is protective. Uh, and so, so because of that, they're able to um, kind of help protect uh, us from a variety of different infections also by uh, maintaining a certain uh, immune response readiness uh, for a variety of uh, intruders that come. But uh, because we also spoke not just about the bacterial communities, but we also spoke about the viral communities, uh, these microbes um, are obviously involved in a variety of different diseases. And so the understanding of not only the bacterial diversity that we just spoke about, but also the potential of these viruses to be present and develop and uh, get into the organs are very important. And here are some examples um, of viruses that cause human disease. So also something that we can look at uh, as we study uh, the microbiome. Epstein-Barr virus, um, the herpes uh, family viruses in general, human papilloma virus and hepatitis B and C are major conditions that drive about a quarter of cancers, right? So the link between microorganisms and human health and disease is very uh, direct. And so we can see one perspective when we look at the microbial diversity and community that is in, a, uh, uh, in this holobiont uh, relationship with the host. Uh, so it, it continues to coexist in a beneficial uh, way with the host. Um, and then we can see uh, some of these uh, becoming uh, dangerous and causing uh, uh, disease. <clears throat> 